Hi, welcome. It's Neil Dugan here again. And in the uh, the final video around the four phase um, upward spiraling process of awakening, uh, we're going to actually have a look at the phase of awakening. So this is what's going to take you towards enlightenment. And once we um, master each of the earlier three phases, is available to us at any time, and indeed. Uh, will be our steady state. So rather than actually diving into the sort of destructive descending cycles, what you'll sit in is actually a state of awakening. So we're not talking about becoming um, completely awake here, um, but we're talking about being in a state of awakening. Now this state of awakening has all of the wonderful emotions that you can think of. So um, the process of joy and bliss and such stable emotions as contentment are completely different to the process around being happy. You know, happy is about being asleep, joy, bliss, contentment. These things are about being awake, being alive, being engaged with your environment, being completely connected, allowing um, total communication to be occurring between yourself and your environment, and of course communication within yourself and communication with the divine. Sitting in here are all of the wonderful attitudes as well. And these are things like forgiveness um, for yourself, forgiveness for everybody around you, forgiveness for your behavior, forgiveness for everybody else's behavior, forgiveness for um, you know, everything that everybody else is doing in the, in the world, what's happening with the, um, the political situation and, and all the rest of it. So allowing things like acceptance and forgiveness to occur both internally and externally are paradigm shifting um, processes within yourself. Now I'm going to mention two things which um, I'm not expecting um, you know, people who are viewing this video to be able to achieve immediately. Um, I've not achieved these completely, but I certainly worked a long way towards them. And these are uh, the Buddha-like um, attitudes of non-attachment and non-identification. Now seriously, um, to be able to achieve these things uh, completely would be um, a remarkable process. And from time to time people tell me about how you can become a Buddha um, in a month's time or in three months time or something like this and you know I always wait for the phone call um, from them to let me know that they've actually achieved this because the reality is that the amount of work that's involved in becoming non-attached so completely non-attached to everything in your environment completely non-attached to yourself completely non-attached to um, your relationship with the divine is a massive task and it's um, it's a work in progress so I look at it as being this wonderful um, work in progress and um, certainly we can take the benefit of increasing the level of non-attachment. Non-identification um, is a similarly extraordinary um, you know, thing to be able to achieve and once again we can only work steadily towards this process of becoming non-identified. So non-attachment, non-identification, these truly Buddha-like um, or Christ-like um, attributes uh, something for us to be working towards and experiencing in greater and greater amounts all of the time. So am I less attached and less identified than I was eight years ago when I began um, working with my anxiety, depression, um, you know, structure and, and, and trying to actually cure myself of this tremendous problem that I had with depression and, and mania for that matter as well. Um, you know, if I compare then with now, unquestionably I'm far less attached far less identified. I urge you to follow your way through the work that we're doing here so that you too can actually share in this experience and you too can actually get yourself out of this anxiety depression cycle. In the first three phases we talked about um, the relationship between one aspect of the mind in each of those phases. So it began with an emotional impulse. So we talked about something from the emotional brain or the emotional mind. Um, you know, Some people would call this the heart. Uh, for me, the heart means the spirit and the higher self and these types of things. But for many people, when they talk about the heart, they're talking about the emotions. And that's where this first impulse comes from. The, the actual denying or questioning impulse comes from the practical mind of our body. So this would be the instinctive aspects, the aspects that control sexuality, sensuality, and the aspects that actually control um, all your ability to actually manage the uh, your environment physically, so being able to actually physically manage your environment and manage your body within the environment as well. The third step um, is a step of reconciling and that reconciling comes from the true intellect. So we're not talking about the busy mind aspect of the intellect here now, we're talking about the true intellect which is able to reconcile 
the emotions and the moving center in such a way that you actually get the kind of outcome. When we go into this fourth step here at the moment, what we're talking about, the actual um, awakening step, which is running, running you towards enlightenment, then in this step here, you've actually got a harmonized aspect of the mind. So the minds have become very harmonized. At this point here as well, you have a much decreasing impact from your ego, which is the intellectual imagination. You have much less input from the pain body, which is the emotional or feelings-based uh, imaginary construct. And you also have far less um, impact from the imaginary construct around your body. So a good example of the imaginary construct around the body would be, I am always tired. I never have any energy. My body is always hurting. I have fibromyalgia, I have depression. All of these things are imaginary constructs actually in the body. So they're different to the ego, they're different to the pain body, and they are the construct around the body itself. So all of these three constructs are well into the background. So they're becoming further and further into the background. The mind is very, very harmonized. So we're talking about the emotions, the intellect, and the moving center, they're all very harmonized. And of course, lastly, in, in this state here, the higher self is able to be dominant. So um, we've at last, at long last, got our pain body and our ego and this lesser body. They're, they're in the background. We've got some harmony in the mind. And the higher self is able to actually step forward unencumbered and get about its work in its process of becoming enlightened and becoming closer and closer to being a divine being, um, you know, in a unique, in a unique state. So. That's a lot in there, and I appreciate your time watching the videos up to this point. We're going to go into um, some of the application of these types of things over the last few videos in the 30-day series. And uh, so I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And uh, I really do hope you find um, or have found this useful. And uh, please do like and share. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Sorry for bumping the tripod there. And um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. So thanks for watching. and. Um, you know, best wishes on your journey. Thank you. Bye.